only 10,000 years ago, when Gobekli Tepe was still in use. North America was a completely different place than it is today. Massive inland lakes covered the landscape, some of which would have been among the largest in the world. And the Laurentide ice sheet was still present in northeastern Canada. This ice sheet had been receding from the gradual warming of the earth since the previous ice age and reached as far south as Minnesota, Wisconsin, Michigan, and even into the northern parts of states like Illinois, Indiana, Ohio, and Pennsylvania. As this massive ice sheet covering melted, it left behind the great flat plains of the United States and Canada. And this huge influx of fresh water not only created our Great Lakes, which are the largest lakes in the world, but it also created many more giant inland bodies of fresh water that have since drained or dried up around the same time period of 12,000 to 9,000 years ago, during and after the Younger Dryas period. At one point, the entire western United States was dotted with lakes the same size as the ones in the Great Lake chain. This would have completely changed the climate of the land, making it a temperate oasis, much like the eastern United States and Canada. Among these massive lakes in the west were Lake Bonneville, which covered most of Utah, Lake Missoula in Montana, Lake Lahontan, which covered a large portion of Nevada, and Lake Tulare in the California Central Valley. And these were just a few of the many significant sized lakes all throughout the west, and in the east the Great Lakes had a much larger water volume than they do today. But the largest of all was where most of the water from the ice sheets gathered, across much of central Canada. This lake, Lake Agassiz, was larger than the Caspian Sea. And all that water that used to exist here periodically drained, raising the ocean levels by an estimated 3 to 9 feet. This massive amount of water would have caused floods unlike anything seen in modern history, and many say it's responsible for the countless flood myths among Native American tribes. The Younger Dryas was a brief period of rapid cooling of the climate, approximately 12,900 to 11,700 years ago. The exact cause of this event is still debated, but what we do know for sure is that whatever mechanism or event caused it, it changed the fate of the Earth, and humanity, forever. The Earth was extremely plentiful and diverse, with thousands of species existing that are now extinct because of this rapid cooling period. North America and Northern Europe were home to megafauna, like we see in Africa today. Many of the creatures we see in our forest had gigantic sized counterparts that roamed the land at this time. Even the plants and trees that grew were gigantic in proportion to what we have today. The earth was truly different, and this was not all that long ago. They called this the Pleistocene, and it lasted up until the end of the Younger Dryas period 11,700 years ago end of the Pleistocene, before the Younger Dryas, was a time of gradual heating of the Earth's climate and melting of the Laurentide ice sheet, creating these massive lakes in the US and Canada. But this period of plenty came to a halt with the onset of the Younger Dryas mini ice age, which caused the Laurentide ice sheet to quickly return and reach even further south than its maximum during the previous ice age in only a short time. And then with the rewarming of the climate 11,700 years ago, the Laurentide ice sheet melted, and by about 8,000 years ago, most of these giant lakes had disappeared and left cataclysms in their wake. This water coming from the ice sheets decimated the landscape. Anywhere that was in that flat Great Plains area was covered in a mile of ice, and it looked like Greenland or Antarctica. Imagine Australia is connected to Antarctica, and all the ice caps melts in an extremely short period of time geologically. That's exactly what happened in North America 11,700 years ago. The water filled the Great Lakes to their highest point, 
the result of which you can see today if you walk along any of their shorelines. Most of this water was drained through the St. Lawrence Seaway, or created large areas of wetlands like in Minnesota, the land of 10,000 lakes. But that's not to say the east was free of massive flooding. Many smaller lakes dotted the land in the northeast, and with the rising of sea levels, areas in the south like Florida would have been experiencing similar events. In the west we find massive lakes. The largest, Lake Bonneville, covered the Great Salt Lake Basin in Utah. And a similar sized lake existed in Nevada as well. The remnant of which is a weird little lake called Pyramid Lake. Name that because there is one out of place rock structure pointing out of this lake bed that looks just like a pyramid. There was another giant lake that filled the California Central Valley. This one drained out through the San Francisco Bay carving out that massive feature and wasn't fully drained until the 1800s. And then tens of thousands of other decent sized lakes existed as far south as Mexico. And almost every lake that exists today was much larger at this time. Water was carving up the land and creating massive bays, powerful river flows, and entire canyons trying to reach the oceans. This would have caused the entire western portion of North America to have a wet climate and look similar to somewhere like British Columbia. It may have even created pockets of subtropical to tropical rainforest in the southwest United States and northern Mexico. This would explain the populations of jaguars that used to roam in Arizona, and the grizzly bears that were in northern Mexico. Essentially, an entire giant region went from frozen to water in a measly few thousand years. Absolute cataclysm took place, and the oral traditions of nearly every single culture in the area remembers this event, because it wasn't that long ago in our history. This sudden melting of the ice caused the oceans to rise, and the land to change. If you look closely at North America, you can see the scars this event left on the land. The Mississippi River Basin is enormous. It stands to reason that the largest accumulation of fresh water on Earth would have made the Mississippi by far the largest river on the planet. And the flat land of Oklahoma and into Texas looks as if it gave way to huge pressure from water. And areas like the Badlands show scars from water erosion. This water leaked through the Rocky Mountains and filled the lakes in the west. But a massive amount of this water sat in the middle of Canada and made up the largest lake in the world. The largest lake in the world today, Lake Superior, is what this giant Lake Agassiz drained into. This lake would have been legendary and known to all the tribes across the continent. Many would have lived on its shores and were aware of its frequent flooding. But this lake, as giant as it was, completely flooded and drained in phases during this short few thousand years after the Younger Dryas. Today, all that is left of this tremendous accumulation of fresh water is lakes like Lake Winnipeg, Reindeer Lake to the north, and Lake of the Woods to the south, and the millions of smaller lakes in between. The draining of Lake Agassiz alone is said to have caused the sea levels to rise by an estimated 3 to 9 feet. And all that water had to travel across the land to get there, destroying everything in its path. I often go camping in an area of southern Ontario that was once part of this giant lake and floodway. This area is known to be home to some of the biggest walleye, pike, muskie, and sturgeon on the planet. Natives in the area also believe it to have been home to a giant water dragon that they depict in their rock art. It's an absolute water world where you must have a canoe to survive. And locals say the water here is some of the cleanest on earth. Many of the locals still drink straight from the lakes without any form of water treatment despite there being a large population of beavers here. This is what most of North America would have been like during this time, 
roughly 11,700 to 8,000 years ago. Wet, humid, cooler, and lots of thick forests. This would have made the climate, especially around these lakes, very suitable for civilization. And it is in these areas where many of the tribes claim their ancestral homes to be. And the cataclysms and changing climate that almost destroyed them forced them to migrate elsewhere. The tribes as far south as Mexico speak of this time in their histories. The Aztecs spoke of their homeland they called Aztlan as well as the homeland of other Mesoamerican tribes, being to the north on an island in the middle of a massive lake that they modeled Tenochtitlan after. The capital city of the Aztec built in the middle of the largest lake in Mexico, Lake Texcoco. Some say this island city of Aztlan existed in Lake Bonneville, or Lake Agassi, and it most likely was indeed located in one of these extinct lakes. Tribes across the U.S. have a story that stays roughly the same throughout an array of tribes, including the Cherokee, the Navajo, Hopi and Zuni, the Iroquois and Northeastern tribes, and the Ojibwe and Great Lakes tribes, of the entire continent being flooded and only several people surviving. Sometimes the story involves coming up out of a cave or subterranean world to a flooded realm, and some involve small groups surviving on a canoe and the animals, or spirits of the animals, assisting them in rebuilding the land. In one of the Great Lakes region stories, the animals come together with man after the flood to try and dive down to the earth to retrieve some dirt and see how deep the waters went. All the animals dove as deep as they could, but none could reach the bottom, until a brave muskrat dove deeper than any other creature, so deep that he couldn't take it anymore and perished. But when his body rose to the surface, in his hand was mud from the earth. The turtle then gave his body so that they could put the mud from the muskrat on his back and create an island. This was the origin of North America, or Turtle Island, and many tribes would perform rituals to converse with this turtle spirit because it was the land. And some have pointed out that when you look at North America from outer space, you can see turtle features. The shell is the middle, and the tail is Mexico. Baja California and Florida are the two legs. Alaska and Eastern Canada are the arms. And then the most interesting of all is there's this island in the very most northern part of Canada, right where the turtle's face would be. And you can literally see what looks to be the eye and the mouth of the turtle. But what existed here before? Who were these predecessor cultures that thrived in this bountiful climate before the Younger Dryas? What was destroyed by these massive cataclysms? Well, the truth is we really don't know. All we have are stories like that from the Aztecs, and we have theories like the theory many have about structures said to be natural geological formations actually being eroded structures from some past unknown civilization. And some really look like they could be. The powerful flood that the draining of these lakes would have caused would erode any metal or soft stone, and the pressure would have made any bricks or structures look no different from the landscape. Graham Hancock is popular for questioning if certain archaeological sites date back to this era, and he points to Serpent Mound, Cahokia, and Teotihuacan, all of which were completely buried when discovered, and Cahokia even looks as if it was swept over by floods. The Mesoamericans held a belief that a predecessor race of giants built Teotihuacan. They called these giants the Kina Metzen. And I get into this subject in another video I'll put in the cards in the description. But they believed that these giants were taken out in, you guessed it, a massive cataclysmic flood. Plato also spoke of a civilization on a lake, Atlantis. Said to be beyond the pillars of Hercules, Atlantis most likely spanned all the way from the Americas into Africa and possibly Europe. If this civilization was as advanced and powerful as spoken of by Plato, 
then they would have had a massive worldwide civilization. These floods caused by Lake Agassiz and the Laurentide Ice Sheet could have very well been the thing that took Atlantis down. If we saw a similar event happen today, very few cities would be left in the United States, perhaps only the ones that lie at high altitudes. If there was a great civilization in, let's say, the Caribbean, it would have been swallowed up by the sea from the draining of Agassiz alone. The Bimini Road was above water before this. Florida had a much bigger coastline. And entire civilizations could have very well existed here that have been entirely wiped out and still down there under the ocean. That's all for now. Let me know what you think about this one and what exactly was going on in America at this time. Also, be sure to check out the Patreon. There's some good stuff there. Thank you so much for watching. See you next time.